Hi, Jeremy Young from Atomos here, and I have some pretty cool announcements for you today. Before I do that, I just want to thank all the Shogun and Ninja Assassin users. Our first range of 4K products sold 50,000 units this year, and we're very proud of the number of units out there and how we've helped people adopt 4K in a really affordable way and simple to use way, and we're helping the camera makers make sure that those, that 4K camera pickup is happening. Well, 4K isn't the latest anymore. Now, it's 4K HDR. So what is HDR? Well, Atomus have two products that are gonna make your life very, very simple. Faster, easier to set up, and very much a simple workflow enhancement that allows you to deliver true HDR to your customers in a very fast and efficient workflow. The two products that we have are Shogun Flame and Ninja Flame. Why Flame? Well, Flame, it, we're igniting the HDR workflow and we're giving you the world's brightest and widest dynamic range panel in a field monitor ever, ever produced. So, Shogun Flame, Ninja Flame, what do they give you? Atom HDR, which is our, which our custom, simple HDR engine, which I'll go through in a, in a minute. Secondly, 1500 nits of brightness. Our old Shogun was 400 nits. Your iPhone is 400 nits. This is 1500 nits. It's four times brighter than any other screen that we've ever produced or that you are looking at today. The third thing is 10-bit color processing. This allows to remove banding and you can actually view the color space as well as the brightness that is a real post-production environment. So you're, you're really processing in a 10-bit environment. This allows you to have zero banding and you can really see your colors perfectly and transitions be between colors are very, very clear. The fourth thing that we have is we're offering our continuous power back as well as a new robust um, case for the products. We got some feedback that maybe our current products were, if you dropped them, they broke a little bit too easily. So we've listened to that feedback and we've, we actually released a bumper, a silicon bumper, where we've now integrated the bumper into the design. And we're very proud of this design. Some new designers on board and this really shows their talent. We've got our dual battery system, which means you'll never run out of power. And the fourth thing is we've now included everything in the case that we used to, plus we're giving you the batteries. We're also giving you a new charger, which is three times the charging. And we're also giving you a, an HDR hood because there are many environments where shooting HDR, you need a hood. And that's a very important point when understanding how to get a, the best out of HDR. So what is Atom HDR? The first thing I want to tell you is your camera, provided it does log and outputs log over SDI or HDMI, your current camera does HDR because HDR is an increased brightness range. So all it's doing, just like log, is compressing brightness into one image and we give you a, there's a 10-bit log curve coming from the cameras, which is why 10-bit processing is very important. And we take that log curve and we display it on our screen. How do we do that? Well, we ask you to choose a few things. We ask you to tell us which camera and which log curve it's coming from so we can transform it perfectly. We can then display it on a 1500 nit brightness range screen. So our brightest points are at 1500 nits. Our darkest points are down at, at 100 or 50 nits. This shows you a big range of brightness. The third thing that you need is to understand the viewing environment. What type of environment are you shooting in? Is it an evenly lit environment or is it one that has lots of brightness range in it? And that will determine a couple of sliders on the screen. So this is a log signal that's been recorded from a Sony camera. So I, I'm in Sony Log here, Sony S-Log3 and I'm in S-Gamut. This is what it looks like in native video. This is how it was recorded as a log footage. Now, just a, a note, Shogun Flame and Ninja Flame only record the log footage. We don't record the Atom HDR representation of the footage onto the screen. However, you can take that log footage through post and use a post-production HDR monitor, or you could use a Shogun or a Ninja Flame to monitor that in post-production, but we'll get to that a bit later. So what does my log curve look like if I just do a 3D LUT log to video conversion? Let's take a look. So, this is what it would look like, my shot footage, when transformed into Rec. 709. Now, that's not spectacular. I'm blowing out in a lot of areas, and I don't have the detail in the clouds that I had 
when I was in my native footage. There's still, you can see a bit of the clouds there. It looks pretty, it looks okay. It's a bit washed out because I'm in log and I'm displaying it on a Rec. 709 monitor. So if I come back in, I've got my native footage, I've got Atom HDR, which I'm gonna press in a minute. I've got log to video and I've got custom look. Now custom look just lets you apply a 3D LUT. Now the difference between 3D LUTs is most of the time 3D LUTs are used for color looks and for feeling, which is normally about color. They do transform some of the brightness, but remember, HDR is only talking about brightness. And when you put looks on with 3D LUTs, you can often lose details in the brightness. So HDR is not a, a LUT. It is not applied as a LUT in the Atomos system. We are doing something very special here where we have a 1500 nit panel, we have 10 bit processing, and we're taking the log footage exactly from the camera and we're transforming it using our technology inside the panel to represent for you a 99% accurate image of what HDR will look like when you take your log footage and you apply HDR processing to it. So we're giving you the opportunity to shoot perfectly, first time, without any grading tools, without any color bars or anything on the screen, grayscales, and without any rule of thumbs. You can do it by eye. So let's have a look at what HDR looks like. That's my Atom HDR. Can you believe it? Let's play through that footage. First of all, the colors are back. Secondly, I have no banding in the sky because I'm processing a 10 bit. And thirdly, I have a, a very wide brightness range. I can see a direct sunlight and I can see the kite surfer going in front of the sun. I can still see the detail in the clouds. This has never been able to be achieved in the field before. And how come we can do this? Again, 1500 nits of brightness, so we can show wide brightness curve detail. We then have the range of brightness in that 1500 nit is displayed using 10-bit processing from the log of the camera. So we've got log of the camera, we're processing perfectly for our panel in 10-bit using 1500 nits of, of brightness range. Very, very simple, and we can show you how this, so when you apply exposure adjustments, it looks like it's gonna look when you finished in HDR. Okay, so let's have a look at how we set it up. So I'm on Sony here, I've got S-Log3 and I'm on S-Gamut. If I wanted to adjust the gamut, I just adjust the gamut here. If I want to adjust the log, I can adjust the log between two and three. If I, if I want to do Canon, I've got Canon there. If I want to change to Panasonic, I've got Panasonic. I have ARRI. We're also releasing RED and JVC. By the time you see this video, there'll be an update including those two makers. Now down here, I have viewing environment. What does viewing environment mean? Well, viewing environment means that not all HDR scenes are created equal. It depends on how you are viewing it and what type of environment you're viewing it from. So if you don't have a hood or it's not, very, or it's not nighttime and it's not very dark, then you need to pump up your brightness so that you can see the screen and you can adjust it so that the brightness and colors look as you are looking at them. So viewing environment, if I'm in a house and the lights are on, then I should be on my house. If I'm in the nighttime in a dark area, or I've got the hood on because I'm outside shooting someone walking from the sunny side of a building to the, to the shadow side of a building. Normally we wouldn't shoot that because when they transition between the two, we'd lose the detail in the people. But now with HDR, we, we can shoot them turning a corner from brightness to darkness. Now, when we do that, we have to make sure that we're in the right viewing environment there so we can still pick up the detail and still see how to shoot them. So the best way to think about Atom HDR is that it is a tool to allow you to shoot wide brightness range scenes, which people call high dynamic range, but we're just gonna call them brightness range. Wide brightness range scenes can now be shot using these methods. So I'm, I'm down here in the dark um, because when I shot this, I had my hood on. But if I remove the hood, then, and don't forget we include the hood in the box for you, if I remove the hood, then I would need to adjust what I see on the panel because I'm not in the environment where it's super, super dark. So you'll get used to it, it's very easy. Um, there's only three settings to, to choose. I wanna do Atom HDR, boom, up the top. What is my camera? What is the log curve? I'm on log, S log three and I'm on S gamma. And you can see when I set that up correctly, everything starts to look good. If I choose, something incorrectly, like the wrong camera, it doesn't look so good. And you lose the richness of the details. 
So I'm gonna go back to Sony, make sure I'm on S-Log3, make sure that I'm on in-S gamut, and now you can really see the wonderful richness of HDR shooting. Okay, so now we've covered off Atom HDR and what that is and, and the wonderful things it gives you. You can see the, the beautiful image that's coming out of log with 10 bit with Atom HDR processing and 1500 nits on the panel. But 1500 nits is a very important point. It allows us to view outside really bright images, four times brighter than the old Shogun and your, and your mobile phone. And actually when the sun's directly on it, you can really see what is going on still. So it allows you in standard dynamic range footage, you can use 1500 nits of brightness in the Rec. 709 brightness curve and really pump up the details. So if I just go to a Rec. 709 shot, which is, here's one we, we prepared earlier, and I show you, if I take off Atom HDR, and now I've just got a brightness slider. So this is down at 400 nits, and this is right up. And you can see I'm blowing out there in this image, but I can go really, really bright. So we're in the studio right now. It's really difficult to actually show you the differences, but I'm gonna cut away now to the Shogun 1 and the flame side by side. So you can see that the difference in brightness between the two. And this really does give you a, a major improvement in the way you can use a monitor based field recorder in these type of really high brightness environments. So now we're just making the product more versatile and allowing you to utilize it in, in areas where you would have had to compromise before or you would have had to have used a hood. The next thing I want to show you is the sun hood. This is our new sun hood. Very cool. Um, so there's a couple of things here. Firstly, removable. So I can get my team in there to view my HDR or my high brightness scene. The second thing is, if I just want to remove the hood, I can just remove it and the, the surround remains. So what that means is when I want to put this back on, then it becomes a very easy task and it locks in with magnets and then I can put my hood on in the same way. And there's my hood arrangement. So Atomus reinventing everything again, the hood. This is the Atom HDR hood, it's in the box and will allow you to view in those dark environments if the outside environment that you're shooting in isn't conducive to being able to see the H Atom HDR. Now just remember, Atom HDR and any HDR viewing because of the range of brightness that we're showing on the screen, usually there's one area that's really bright or two areas that are really bright and then the rest is really dark. And that's because in order to show that bright point, the others get darker. So to show the range, more than likely the whole image will go a little bit darker, which is why the hood comes into play in environments where it's not dark outside. You can use the hood to make sure you've, you're setting up your shot correctly. So that's the Atomus hood. The last thing I wanna show you is our new this is our new charger. It's three times faster than any other charger in the world. And it will give you, it's three times faster than our charger, sorry, and about twice as fast as any other charger in the world. This will give you a one hour charge on a, on a four cell battery and a one and a half hour charge on a six cell battery. So that means we're actually charging the battery faster than you can consume it. So you can take one battery off, put it on the charger, by the time the second battery is utilized, and the continuous power system needs to kick back to the, the spare battery, you can replace the battery that you've just charged. This is what we've been working towards for many years so that we can give you a really an ecosystem of power charging that never leaves you wanting power. And that's the new charger from Atomos. We include everything in the box. You still get your yellow case for the Shogun and now you get a red case. Same size, same everything inside except for the breakout cables. And the last thing I just want to tell you the difference between the two, the Shogun Flame is $16.95 US dollars and the Ninja Flame is $12.95 US dollars. So for around $1,500 US dollars, you get everything in the box ready to go HDR with SDI. For $1,200, you get the Ninja Flame, which is HDMI only. Stay tuned for more wonderful announcements from Atomus into the future.